I'm coming to you from my dorm room at Agassiz High College. Came to Georgia and we're watching Five Girls Five Minutes. Five Girls Five Five Minutes. Don't edit videos. It is Thursday. I'm Tally, and I'm actually in my dorm room this week. Yay! So anyway, I thought I would start off by saying posters. Uh, well, one poster. I got this for Christmas. It says Bazinga up at the top, which, if you don't know, is the first track on my album, a song that I wrote that got me my best connection in LA and my senior quote. And then on the other side I have my Get Glue stickers because I finally figured out what to do with them, which is to stick the sheets with the stickers on the wall so then I don't have to worry about being able to take the stickers off of something. So, yay! That was smart. So anyway, um, since I'm back at school, I guess I should address Sarah's topic, which she talked about how she thought it was cool that um, the Twitty Nerd Writing stopped at Agnes when it usually was doing bookstores, and the answer to that is it didn't stop at Agnes. It actually did stop at a bookstore. Um, there's a bookstore called Little Strap of Stories that's Indicator, and um, they have a small venue, and Agnes has a large venue for them to help hold events, and so that was why Neil Gaiman was here, too, and so, um, yay. Um, but it was still really, really cool for to be like, that's my school! Um, I love my school a lot. Sarah, if you want to come visit Agnes, you should totally do it before I graduate, because then you can stay in my room, and it'd be awesome, and we can hang out, and do stuff. Um, anyway, I don't know what we do. We'd probably find something to do. Um, anyway, um, I guess I'll just keep talking about college. Um, my question was about bigger, large classes. I'm just so used to having small, oops, bigger, large, bigger, small classes. Um, I'm so used to having smaller classes that, um, it was just strange to have so many classes that are kind of big this semester. And really the biggest issue for me is that I took this 100 level Greek civilization class that has like 35 people in it because I thought that I would take 100 level class and be easy because I needed four more hours in order to have the full number of hours that I need to graduate. And um, I was wrong. 300 level classes tend to have a long paper that you're working on. 200 level classes tend to have three or four papers that you're working on, like that you do at periods throughout the semester. And 100 level classes tend to have busy work. Um, my 100 level class requires two to three hours of reading for each class period, which is ridiculous because my 300 level classes don't even require that much. Um, and reading quizzes. What the hell? Reading quizzes. Like, we're two. I don't know. I mean, and I've never been the best at doing the required reading for classes, but it's still, it's like, I don't understand the point of having to do all this reading and then take a quiz on it which, I mean, I'll read through the textbook eventually because we've got exams, but, I mean, if we're going to rehash all of the information that we've just read in the textbook, I don't understand why it's so important that I read the textbook when he's going to give a lecture on the exact same thing. It just makes sense to me. But anyway, it's annoying me. So anyway, other things. GIFs. Um, I pronounce it GIFs. I've always pronounced it GIFs. I've never, I've always pronounced it GIFs. And I pronounced meme. That's how I pronounce meme. I'm just curious if other people pronounce it differently. I know somebody called them Maymays and Mimis and... Meme on noodle, blah, 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 blah. Memes is what I call them. I actually looked at the pronunciation once. Meme. Um, okay, so other things. Songs that get stuck in your head, do you have to listen to them? Usually, yes, because what happens is I'll be listening to my iPod and then turn it off when I'm halfway through a song. And then it all my brain will just be filling in the rest of it until I listen to the full thing. So, yes, that is something that I do. Um, and then, speak, going back to Troy Nerd Fighting, um, Tara was saying that she was thinking about bringing her ukulele to the tour to nerd fighting. I will say there were a lot of ukuleles to the tour to nerd fighting, and only two of them were mine. Um, I thought about bringing my first ukulele, my oldest one, Kaylee, and I was going to have thinking about having them sign it. But I I was already bringing three ukuleles, a mandolin, a banjo, and a guitar back to college with me, and an amp. So I was like, eh, I just didn't feel like it. So, um, but it would been would have been cool. I don't know if, if you decided to do that, but um, there were a lot of people there with ukuleles who could not play them. Um, I mean, I don't consider myself the best ukulele player, but I figure I can kind of play them. Um, then Tara was asking um, who would we most want to meet, and while well, it would be cool to meet Tina Fey or Kate Mikuchi or someone, my answer to that question is Stephen Sondheim. I would want to meet Stephen Sondheim. Stephen Sondheim is God. He wrote a song about it. Um, and then I will go back to musicals in a second. Nail polish. This is the only nail polish that I have at my college with me. It's my blue nail polish. I like my blue nail polish. I don't wear nail polish very often. But when I do, it's blue. Ding. Um, I don't know. I feel like I was saying an ad when I do that. Um, okay, going back to musicals. My question that I've been asking around the internet for the past few days, and I think Sarah already answered it on my live journal, but my question is, what do you think are the three best musicals of all time? Not your favorite musicals, not the ones that you have the strongest emotional ties to. The three best musicals of all time, quality-wise. Um, for me, the answer to that question is Company, 
Forest Line and Assassins. And Assassins is kind of one that I'm kind of iffy on because it's a great show, but I also, you know, Gypsy and Guys and Dolls is really solid and great, but Stephen Sondheim said that Assassins is probably the closest thing to a virgin musical he's ever written, and who am I to argue with Stephen Sondheim? Um, and then Company, just because the music is amazing and the character is amazing, and then A Chorus Line, because it's a chorus line. Um, it's so good, and it's just so revolutionary, and it appealed to such a wide audience, obviously, because it ran so long, and it's just, and out of the top longest running musicals, it's clearly better than Phantom of the Opera and Cats, so, um, yeah, but I don't have time to get into why Phantom of the Opera sucks a lot. So anyway, Libby, I hope to see you tomorrow. Everyone else, I will see you all next Thursday. Bye!